Here the third comes the fecal and cordy. And, and the fourth one is there. What is that? Cochleosaccharotin. Cochleosaccharotomy. What did it do there? There we make a fracture of the osseous spiral lamina. Here comes the osseous spiral lamina. Any doubt? If any doubt, um, <coughs> see my uh, video on anatomy of inner ear. Okay. There uh, this osseous spiral lamina and all other details are given. Um, here in this cochleo, uh, cochleosaculotomy we fracture the osseous spiral lamina so that a permanent fistula is made between the cochlea and the saccule. This is also abandoned because of high chance of an hearing loss. So this, uh, in this preservation of labyrinth and hearing there comes surgeries on the endolymphatic sac and also surgeries on other ear structures mainly the ventilation tube. Uh, second one this uh, osmotic therapy. Third is fecal tag procedure and fourth one is a cochleosaccharotomy. Okay. And what all things comes under? Preservation of hearing and loss of labyrinthine ablation. Here. Preservation is and uh, labyrinthine function. <coughs> and which all uh, surgeries comes under this? Hearing is labyrinthine function no. Uh, this part should be preserved. Understood. So, this whole this labyrinthine part is dis, uh, destroyed. So, again there are two methods. One, we can ablate this vestibular end organ. Or there, are, there is the vestibular component of nerve which is coming. Eighth nerve. Vestibular component. Cochlear component goes here. But only the vestibular component can be uh, destroyed. So there are two procedures to ablate the vestibular end organ or to ablate the vestibular component of eighth nerve. Understood? So these are the two methods. And which are the method for this? To ablate the vestibular end organ. So one is by chemical ablation and then again by non-chemical ablation. So chemical ablation and non-chemical. Okay, so to ablate the uh, vestibular end organ, there are two methods. One is chemical ablation. What is the material used? That is by indirect tympanic injection of aminoglycoside, mainly gendamycin. So gendamycin is introduced indirect tympanically. Okay, so it is very te technically it is very simple procedure. There is little or no time. There is no need of hospitalization. So that is that is a preferred method. That is the intratympanic injection of gendamycin. But there is multiple uh, sittings will be needed and uh, follow up is also a must for the patient. And in bilateral manias, uh, parental streptomycin is also given. Okay, but there is chance of uh, cochlear uh, uh, hearing loss also. Okay, so this uh, one, the preferred one for Chemical ablation is a trans tympanic or intra tympanic injection of gendamycin. Okay. And among the non chemical, the main one is an ultrasonic destruction and cryo, cryo surgery. Okay. <clears throat> what is this ultrasonic destruction? What is uh, ultrasonic sound? What is that? It is uh, uh, sound frequency. Ultrasonic sounds are sounds having frequency above the limit of human hearing. Isn't it? So around uh, 1 million cycles per second. So the frequency should be above the limit of the human hearing. And what is the biological mode of action of this ultrasonic sound? There are mainly three methods. One is mechanical. Okay. One is mechanical. How mechanical? There will be shaking movement. And this uh, shaking movement has got a destructive property. So the biological mode of action, one is mechanical through the shaking movement causing a destructive property. Another one is thermal. And we, when we apply a probe and uh, give an ultrasonic current, then there is absorption of this energy by the tissue. And the tissue gets uh, heated up 
and it causes a destruction. So that is thermal effect and the third one is a chemical effect also. So there are three modes of action for this ultrasonic. And where we have to apply this transducer, there are three routes of access. One is into the lateral semicircular canal. Another one is to both all the three semicircular canals. Both the three semicircular canals. And another one is into the round window. Okay. So there are three modes of uh, uh, application of this ultrasound. So for this, these two, for the uh, uh, reaching the approach to the uh, semicircular canal. How will we approach the semicircular canal? By this method. That is by androstomy uh, or simple mastoidectomy. Okay. So in all the cases, this uh, thickness of the semicircular canal can be reduced by drilling. We have to blue line the semicircular canal. It should be made thin. Then only you put the ultrasonic prop or the transducer over that and uh, apply the ultrasonic waves. So one is a lateral uh, semicircular canal access via lateral semicircular canal that is a wet method and second is uh, access through all the three semicircular canal that is into the ambulated end into the ambulated end mainly to the ambulated end of the uh, posterior semicircular canal okay and the third one that is into the uh, transcanal approach to the round window through the middle layer we make a temperometer flat and through the middle layer put the transducer into the round window so these are the three uh, uh, methods by which we put an ultrasonic uh, waves into the for ablating the vestibular endocons okay and a total of usually we put a total of uh, 3000 joules of current over uh, 15 minutes in all the cases whatever may be the access this is the total amount of uh, 3000 joules over a period of 15 minutes and usually we put uh, uh, this 15 minutes of 5 minutes 3 uh, uh, three rounds ok uh, 5 5 5 15 minutes are the total effect ok so and it will act by the uh, mechanical action, thermal action and by the chemical action. This uh, cryo is by the cooling action. This is into the lateral semicircular canal. Okay. Through a transmastoid approach we reach the ambulated end of the uh, lateral or the horizontal semicircular canal. And 160 degree uh, Celsius. This is the temperature. That is minus, sorry. We are cooling, no? So it is minus 160. Cryo minus 160 degrees. And 3 cycles of um, 2 minutes each. Okay, to this. Again it is 3 cycles, 2 minutes. So in cryo, to the cryo prop is kept into the ambulated end of the lateral semicircular canal through a transmastoid approach. And the temperature is minus 160 degrees Celsius. And uh, uh, three cycles of two minutes each is given. That is cryo. So these are all the methods of chemical abla uh, of the ablation of the uh, vestibular end organ. This uh, approach to vestibular component of eighth now it can be one at the CP angle and two by the internal auditory canal. Two areas we can approach. So at the CP angle it is through retro labyrinth or retro sigmoid approach. Or retro sigmoid. Okay. And at the internal auditory canal it is mainly uh, trans labyrinth or transmastoid approach. Okay, internal auditory canal. Through here, trans labyrinth. Or transmaster, do a tra mastoidectomy and then approach the internal object. You know, we can go there and uh, that is through transmastoid or trans labyrinth. Okay, CP angle is, uh, think that CP angle is a bit uh, posterior. So, retro labyrinth or retro sigmoid approach.
and for the neural artery canal trans, trans mastoid or trans labyrinth. That approach I will tell you later, explain uh, this uh, approach I will explain you later and if you want to explain it earlier class, just uh, put it on the comment box. If you ask for uh, particularly for that, then only I will explain that approach. Okay, so if anybody wants to get it in detail, just put it in the comment box. Okay. And then, so here it comes, this part, these two, ablation of uh, vestibular endogen and ablation of the uh, endogen and uh, vest uh, vestibular component of aether. And another one is no and no. Okay. No and as yes, there is no combination like hearing no and uh, labyrinth yes. No combination like this and no and no. There is no hearing loss as well as a labyrinthine function. Total ablation. Then comes a labyrinthectomy one and then trans labyrinthine vestibular neurectomy and also destruction of the scarpus ganglion. Here comes it. One is labyrinthectomy. This labyrinthine is uh, completely uh, removed. Either we can uh, go through the external artery canal, that is a trans canal approach, through the canal go and uh, remove it, uh, destruct it and in this case through the canal we reach uh, the labyrinth and we destruct the neuroepithelium. Okay, but uh, this trans canal labyrinthectomy is never complete. There is chance that the vertigo can recur again because we cannot remove the entire neuroepithelium through a trans canal approach. And another one is trans mastoid approach that is preferred over a trans canal. And another one is a trans labyrinthine vestibular neurectomy. Okay, trans labyrinthine of this. Trans labyrinthine is considered to be a destructive process. And this is the gold standard if you want to uh, completely eliminate the vertigo as well as hearing. A trans labyrinthine vestibular neurectomy. That is the gold standard in the treatment. Okay. And also there is destruction of the scarpus ganglion. So this uh, now labyrinth. So these are the surgeries for uh, done for Meniere's disease. That is depending on hearing preservation and uh, preservation of labyrinth function. I discussed all this. If you got any doubt, please ask in the comment box. Okay.